Welcome back to yet another awesome music lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which I would like to revisit and elaborate on a musical philosophy lesson that I made two years ago called The Dangers of Too Much Theory. Okay? That became kind of a controversial video because it goes against uh, the traditional way we are taught music, okay? especially uh, in musical academies and such. Now, the idea I present in that video was misunderstood by some, so I would like to elaborate on the idea and see if I can get my point across a little better. Okay? I'm not saying that theory is expendable. I'm not saying that musicians shouldn't learn theory. That's not my point. My point is that there's a fundamental problem with music theory, and that is that theory is the representation of the music. Theory is not the music, just like a map is not the actual road. Okay, that's my main point. That's the basis of my philosophy. I've taught, talked, and played with hundreds, if not thousands, of musicians in my life so far, and I can safely say that I saw a lot more damage done by the way theory is being taught than good, okay? Because theory boxes you in. That's what I tried to, uh, to convey in the previous video. Theory boxes you in and kind of kills your creativity because theory brings rules and rules tell you what you can't and can't do. And since music has no mistakes in it, okay, you can't, there's no such thing as something that you can't do in music. Theory is always behind the music. Theory always comes second. First, there is the music. Then there's the theory trying to explain it. Okay? That's what I'm trying to say here. I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn theory. Theory kind of makes sense of what you hear. It makes sense and kind of uh, gives you ground rules for recreation of specific sounds and musical experiments and musical experiences. But theory is not the first thing in line here. The first thing in line is the music being played. Now, when groundbreaking musicians create a new form of music, they usually break the rules. They usually come up with a new sound. And then theory has to come and explain why that music works the way it works. Theory is always an accessory. Theory is always an accessory to music. The fundamental problem with musical theory is the fact that theory is being um, represented as the music most of the time, while that is not true at all. That is absolutely wrong, actually. If there's anything that I can say that is wrong about music, is the fact that theory is being considered as an actual representation of what music sounds like. Notes on paper are not the notes being played, okay? Um, for example, if, I'm play if, if I play this, okay, and I play it twice, okay, it's not the same thing. The dynamic is different, the expression is different, the miniature accentuations are different, the way that the notes vibrate, okay? The way that the notes vibrate is different every time. The experience is different every time. I can play the same piece. I can play the same chord progression twice, three times. It's gonna be different every time. Theory only tells you what, um, how to think about the music. And that's my problem with music theory, the way it's being taught. That's why most musical, most classical musicians can't improvise. They can't stray from the written page. And that's a crime, in my opinion, because in ancient days, okay, in Bach's days, in Mozart's days, um, 
they knew how to improvise. Improvisation was a heavy part of, of composition, of musical composition. And nowadays, it's rare to find a classical musician who can actually improvise and improvise well. Now, the same goes for jazz, by the way. The same goes for jazz. Jazz players learn how to improvise by memorizing lines and memorizing approaches. So most jazz improvisers actually sound the same. Okay? They have the same approaches. Their improvisations are very, very predictable. And that's because they, um, they sit and learn improvisation from the page. Okay? And unless they have spectacular teachers, um, jazz players who emerge from jazz academies are usually pretty awful musicians. They're, they're spectacular players, but as musicians, they're pretty boring and predictable. Because the way theory is being taught um, precedes the music itself. It's theory first, music second. While in reality, it's music first and theory second. Okay? And once you, um, once you set ground rules and you say, okay, I can do this, but I can't do that, then you're preventing yourself from discoveries. You're preventing yourself from discovering new sounds. You're preventing yourself from making uh, serendipitous mistakes. Mistakes that often lead to terrific compositions. Okay, some of the greatest modern composers, they have no official musical training. No official musical training. And if you try to dissect their music theoretically, you come up with really complex explanations. But that's not what they, that's not where they came from. That wasn't their plan. Their plan wasn't to create a substitution for the 251 by using the third uh, mode of the harmonic minor scale. No, that sound just sounded good to them. They just found a new chord and it sounded good. It sounded nice. It sounded really interesting. Okay, and when you try to explain why those chords work in the in the in the um, in the musical framework in which they they work, you have to explain it theoretically so other musicians can replicate it, and then you get into real trouble. And that's the fundamental problem that I'm talking about because music theory always tries to explain what you hear. It tries to explain what you feel. It tries to explain uh, something that is fundamentally unexplainable. Music is, uh, is probably the highest art form that we humans um, have in our possession exactly because it cannot be explained in words. It cannot be explained because it's felt. It's an emotional tool. It's drawing in abstract. It's, um, it's creating a drawing with colors that we can't actually see. So, we, so, so theory has to take all that and run it through a very complex ling linguistic translation machine in order to create really elaborate rules to, ex to explain things that you can just pick your instrument up and play. That's what I'm trying to say. Theory is a terrific accessory. It can make sense. Um, it can make sense musically, and and it can, it can re it can really compartmentalize and arrange your musical thinking, especially when you get to the higher levels. But as you get to the higher levels, ironically, you start to stray from the theory, and you start to. Th to, to, and you start to explore and find your creativity once again because the theory is not enough. So take this with a, with a grain of, of salt. It's, it's, it's my personal theory, it's my personal philosophy, and even though I've seen it work and I've, I, I've seen uh, and I've met a lot of, you know, many, many musicians 
A lot of people for whom theory only caused confusion and frustration. I have a jazz playing uh, friend. He's not a jazz player per se, but, but he likes to tinker around with jazzy sounds and theory. And I'll never forget what he told me about a certain jazz scale. He told me that he learned that jazz scale in, in his jazz academy days 10 years before he actually understood it. He only understood it when it was time for him to understand it, when, when he could feel the sound, when he could, yeah, feel the sound, when he could feel what that scale meant, when he could hear it, when he could feel it, and when he could speak that language. And it came naturally. He didn't even notice that he was playing it. Um, but when he tried to figure out what it was that he was playing, he suddenly figured out that it was that scale that he learned 10 years ago. Okay, 10 years prior. Music is a synesthetic experience. You feel the sound. You see colors even though you hear them. Okay, you, 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 it's, a, it's a language of emotion. You're tinkering with sound. Music is a tool that only, it's an art form that only exists in time. Okay, when you play a note, you can't grasp it, you can't catch it, you can't freeze it. That's why the theory only represents it. Thank you very much for watching. I'd love to hear your opinion about this, um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.